Hell yeah, brother. You're on the Please Me Fall on YouTube channel. So this is James' secret balancer method. It's probably not a big secret, but instead of using a press tool, usually what we do is uh, just heat the hell out of it and you can usually in one hit get it completely slid on. Yeah, because they're pressed to fit. Yeah, you can't get it off with heat. You still gotta have a puller, but this is the easiest way to get a, a pulley on an LS in our opinion. Yeah, sometimes they're really tight and using the tool to run it down in there ends up messing up the threads in the tool or potentially breaking the tool off in the crank and yeah. that's the last thing you want to do. Gear nice and hot and just shove it all in there. We'll need this where we're going. Is this like air conditioning tape? Yeah. Yeah. Enough to run her down with the bolt now. There you go. Nicely done, brother. She's ready to rip. People are definitely gonna be like, that's the wrong way to do that. We've been doing it like that forever, folks. Probably not on a 150 LS <laughs> have yet to have it cause an issue. It works. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the second uh, episode of Slapping a 427 in Ruby. We're picking up right where we left off. We are just raising Ruby up to get underneath her to roll our engine stand forward with the Texas Speed Reesley 427 on it. We already got the flex plate on, the little hub for the uh, power glide kit that we have. Got our balancer on, tightened down, everything's good to go. And uh, just gonna roll this sucker over here. And we have everything that we need. We got oil, we got, I mean, we don't even have to leave the shop a single time today. We're gonna get this thing in there fired up in a couple hours and we don't have a dyno unfortunately so what do we do james we just wait for the drag strip on thursday yeah that or there's mexico you know <laughs> mexico's not far from florida luckily yeah, not but at all. uh the good news is we can always go over to the freedom factory do some pulls in the uh on the straights and yeah, we do them right across them we got 250 feet of concrete yeah we could launch it on the burnout pad too so we'll go do that we'll do a little bit of testing to see how the car feels, things like that. And then we have a drag strip rental. So the drag strip is opening for just a, a few people will be there and we'll be good to just stay in our own little area, run Ruby, see how she runs and go solely off of our data logs. No dyno time for the new engine. It's gonna be a little weird, but I trust that we'll, we'll get it figured out. Right, guys valley covers on we got our motion race first lift plate off those things are freaking amazing never used one of these it is life-changing so this is a gen 4 block so it does use a different valley cover so the oil pressure dealy whopper is in a different spot but everything should assemble up the same way as the other engine because we already had the front cover uh, cam sensor conversion and all that so is there a crank sensor in this in this yeah, yeah. i oh. put it in off the other motor well the gosh dang sit next to each other we're gonna be ripping today, folks. So we're gonna start reassembling. We'll get with you here in a minute. Well, guys, progress was looking great on Ruby, but we have come up on a pretty large issue here. The OG turbo kit is not going to clear because of the larger half inch head studs and the ears on the six bolt heads that this engine had, and we didn't anticipate that. And James will show you here. If you look on this side, being a stock manifold, they hug the block real tight. And down in here where the extra bolt hole would be if it was a six bolt block, as you can see, the manifold can't come up and roll because it's hard up against those lugs. Yeah. And then on the other side, it being a flip manifold, clears the lugs. Yep. But Here, pull it out of the way real quick or flip it up just so they can see well, those gears. two bolts in it. Oh, okay. But Never it's mind. got... The undersides of these are hitting the tops of the head studs being a bigger diameter. Yeah. So this side looks like it tightened down, but it would get close and then just start to come into contact with those bolt heads and then... Yeah, only two. It's only hitting two. So this side, you know, with the sitting there grinding it, making a little notch in the header tube yep. on the cast manifold would clear the tips of the studs and bolt up no problem. 
but it's this side that's like the huge issue because we don't want to grind down you can't i mean if cutting those off you're taking a six ball head and making it a, a yeah. you know standard standard head we don't want to get the grinder out heat up the hell out of the side of you know one of the heads also cut into it maybe end up snagging the head gasket that's sticking out where those holes would go anyway so what we're going to do is go back to the shop swing through there grab the manifolds that we were originally going to use on this motor in the el camino which is the holly hooker uh, turbo manifolds we have that kit just sitting there because it was for the el camino originally uh, we're going to pull those out of the box and then take them with us up to james's house where james has everything we need uh, a welder H a saw. htp take welder band saw and i got a belt center i mean i got everything to do yep. everything we need to make a turbo kit for it. so what we're going to do now guys is push ruby into the trailer she's getting a new turbo kit and a new engine apparently and there's a lot of this stuff on this uh turbo kit we can still use like we should be able to still use you know from here up we might have to cut it and do some new v-bands and whatnot but what we're going to do is take this with us take the car with us in the trailer I'm going to stop, grab those parts, and then we have everything else that we should need that we'll get to James' house and be able to work on it. So, although it sucks, we can't just finish it and start it up right now. It is very close. Intake's on. Everything's hooked up. We just need oil, water, and the turbo kit. Yeah, but fluids and the turbo kit, and it's ready to run. Yeah, it, uh, it is what it is. So, what, what turbo kit are we on now? 28? Yeah, I think like 37 or so. 37. Okay, guys, we're getting another turbo kit upgrade on Ruby. Turns out we got problems. So, we'll... Uh, We'll see you in the morning when we get to James' house. Right now, we're gonna load this thing in the trailer, get it ready for tomorrow, and uh, we'll be working up in Odessa. So Odessa. we're all over the map. It's all good, we'll make it work. We will adapt and get this figured out. Well, gosh dang, you got your Florida slippers on. You got my house slippers on, because we are home. <laughs> gosh dang, guys, here we are at James' house. First time we've ever filmed anything here. Yeah. So you guys are gonna see a lot of cool stuff. He's got a lot of things parked around his yard because that's just how James rolls. His wife is really into him parking stuff in their yard. Florida man, you know, you just got to park everything you can in your yard. Florida man, white buff is looking good, dude. You got to clean. I wiped her down last night. Not Golly, not this guy's crazy. All right, well, we got Ruby here, guys. And I guess we should probably just... Do you want to show him the 240? We can. I haven't shown nobody yet because I've been keeping it a secret to, to show on the channel. Okay. All right, so guys, James 240, as you guys know, is a nitrous breathing unit for the longest time. All he did was spray the house down. He does no time racing where you can't post times or anything. Everyone's pretty low key about their setups, but this thing looks pretty unreal. I guess yeah. we should probably start this off with this. Yeah. Got an old DeSoto Speedway unit down yeah, here, too. Me a, my old four speed small block Chevy 76 Camaro over here. Ready got, to hit some circles. I see got, the blazer. Blaze, got the old F1 smokums. Dude, the white trash. White trash, trash from the burnout contest. <laughs> we got, they just got it all here, dude. I got my boat. We got the boat, dude. Got the whole combo. And then, uh, yeah, white trash would be at the shop, but the boost boys took over our shop. We don't have room for it, dude. So, this is the new and improved 240. Shebang. Dude, what's the story with this thing? How big is this turbo? So, team? this is a Garrett. Um, it's a 94 millimeter. Yeah, that's <laughs> so that's it, a large and in charge. It's not a ball bearing, it's a journal bearing turbo, but I got a really good deal on two of them. And yeah. everyone knows I've been turboing the Nova. Yep. But this coronavirus track shut down. I was looking to test the car nitrous, but I needed to find like another 200 horsepower. And I figured the easiest way to do so would just be slap a turbo on Slap there, a so. turbo on there. And I see you're so, stealing parts off the Nova because this was for the Nova, right? Yeah, this I did buy this for the Nova, but now it's being borrowed yeah there you go so. you gotta do what you gotta do so the nova's over here chilling waiting on some stuff 240 yeah, the motor for that's at the machine shop so i figured you know why not get froggy and i've had these headers these are the old headers off of before those nice stainless ones yep. made. so threw a bunch of old parts new parts together and gonna have you a turbo car yeah i put an hp on it and you know keep it simple yep holly hp computer the good thing the cool thing about the nova's motor too is it's actually a a motor that Texas Speed had a dart block yeah. that was damaged, and they just gave it to us to see if we could uh, save it. And it James out Machine the Machine Shop, yeah, fast forward race engines, checked yeah. it out, and was like, you know, big thanks to Texas Speed on hooking me up on that. And yeah, it saved me a good bit of money. So. One of the motor mount holes was just drilled too far through. Yeah, it went so. right through a water jacket, but that's no big deal because it's gonna be on methanol, so it doesn't need water in it. Well, gosh dang. So. All right, well, this is our fab shop for the day. We're using the table over here. James has the welding table, and we have all the parts that we need. We'll show you what's up with the car. Here's some of the 
uh, exhaust pipe we're going to be using for the new turbo kit. That's the new crossover tube and then some uh, new intake aluminum if we need it. So folks, unfortunately, after all this time, this tube is probably going away today. So as you guys know, our old turbo kit did not fit any longer. Where is, oh, the other one's under the car because I couldn't get it out. So I just it. had to drop it through. So this morning I went to the shop and I knew we had these Holly hooker headers there. And what I did is put them on the car just to make sure they work. They're actually pre-made turbo manifolds and there's a V-band on the back there. It comes with that crossover tube that's in your garage. And that crosses over to this side. And it's just another log style header over there or manifold and These actually clear six bolt heads perfectly. I didn't know if they would for sure So I went to the shop this morning put them on before I went and got parts and The only difference now is instead of having our outlet right here for the turbo as we always have It now comes out right down here. You see this? So what we're gonna have to do is from here build our Ruby turbo kit number 400 and come up straight through here and <laughs> figure out a spot for it there. Yeah. So the turbo is going to be way further forward, but uh, that's all right. We'll put some more weight over the nose and let it rip. I mean, not for nothing, too. We took 100 pounds off the nose going into this aluminum block. Oh, true. Yeah, true, so true, true. It's already going to be nose light. So, yeah, we'll move some weight forward. We took some weight out. We, we knew we had a problem previously with uh, all the heat from the old manifold kind of built up in this area. And it might be best to have the turbo out of that area anyway. That's where our head gasket went out. And we feel like we were really heating the hell out of that side of the head with yeah. just the two pipes joining and everything right in this area. We kept melting spark plug wires, things like that. So now we'll have some airflow down there. We'll put the turbo up here. And it'll actually look just fine because it's got that big exhaust pipe that's still going to go all the way back to there. So it'll probably be a little bit lower, a lot more forward, but it should look pretty good by the end of the day. Right. Yeah, we should knock this out in just a few hours. It's going to be fun. We're going to... Uh, Start by removing this turbo from the old kit and setting that aside so that when we have a fun little LS project pop up, we have a perfectly good ready to rip turbo kit for it. Hopefully we don't have to cut anything off, but I think we might have to cut the wastegate pipe off. Yeah. All right guys, so just for reference of where we're gonna be aiming, so our outlet is down there. Somewhere like that. A little more forward, honestly. Thing. Well, yeah. the pipe's three inch and the flange is bigger, so if we put the center of the flange, even with like where the pipe can be, yeah, it'd be somewhere like in this. And then we'll have to put our support off of those two bolt holes, something like that. You think? Yeah. Okay. That's actually not bad. It's not nearly as ugly as I thought it might be. Okay, cool. Nice and light turbo here. Yeah, it's so easy to work with. <laughs> you crushed it on the uh, join up to the T5 yeah, flange layer. I mean the. The most time consuming thing to this whole process was beating this yeah. square. Gotta make sure it's right though. So guys, you're gonna see just how well this already fits and they're just gonna be impressed, dude. Friggin fabrication skills around here are just going up by the day. By the day. All right. We could always move the foil packs a little bit. Plan for it to be like right there. Okay. James cut the original uh, charge pipe here, and we'll actually just be able to leave the blow off valve there, leave our little entrance here. Might have to trim it off because it, it could be close to the throttle body blade. Actually, no, it's not heading it. And then we're just going to pie cut what is existing. Just, you know, take the old pipe, pie cut it, and make this turn, and we're done. Look at that. While James works on cutting that, I'm going to pull these headers off and put the gaskets in because I was just kind of mocking them up. Once that's done, I mean, we're in really good shape. Got to put the wastegate on there and then do the drain for the turbo. We're going to also have to extend the feed line, which sucks because it's only like eight inches, but we did get a longer line for that. So that's some stuff I'm going to knock out. No joke, guys. This could not have worked out any better. Now, I'm not a huge fan of having the exhaust pipe that close to the intake might put some heat into it but hell this thing only runs for eight seconds at a time i mean this is this is best case scenario the pipe all fit i mean everything's the exhaust fit perfect wide man has clearance the wastegate will have clearance the blow off valve has just the right amount of clearance i mean freaking a burning her in there brother 
Hell yeah. So guys, this is going to be finished tomorrow. We don't know if this will fit or not, but we're gonna go back to my house before the track rental, which is at four. And we're gonna try and, uh, you know, we'll probably have to make some adjustments to get to fit, but whatever. That won't be that bad. Other than that, the turbo is mounted. Uh, the only thing that we have to do is pull this main pipe off so that we can just put the wastegate on. Once that's done, we'll finish everything up tomorrow, probably the drain, the feed, and all that. Yeah, it's about two hours of work left and yeah. make a new drain. We're getting her done. While our vacuum lines. And yep, we got a spool of vacuum lines sitting in right here. I'll throw that in the car. Got a lot of classic day working out of the trailer with the rain, dude. Coming in clutch. Yeah. All day. Dude, these fit way better than the old man holds that were upside down, by the way. Yeah. Way better. Like there's no, the clearance on the steering shaft and everything is really good Nice now. quality product from Holly Performance. Yes sir, shout out to Holly. You, you free know the shipping, deal. month of April. Ooh, you know the deal. Yeah, free shipping on everything Holly, month of April. Boys, check it out. Look at that. So be right mm. on here like this. Bada bing, bada boom. Get this thing cleaned up and we're done for today. Part three of this video comes tomorrow. Guys, drop in the comments. Is this too nice for Ruby? A 427 and an upgraded turbo kit? Just mm. give it the check. Either a big welded turbo kit. Golly. Upgrade. Whoa. Believe me, if you had the MIG here, I would have turned the MIG on over oh, the we TIG just to rah, just put it just on there. But sorry, the HTP just makes the weld too nice, frankly. Yeah. Nice weld. Do, I guess there's no point in putting it on. We'll put it on tomorrow when we're ready to. Yeah, we'll bolt it all on and everything. Yeah. Get some spark plugs and all that stuff. I got spark plugs. We just need bolts for the uh, turbo yep. or some studs if we can find them. And there should be spark plugs in here. I, I got R5671 nines. I okay. can cut it. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. We'll see you in the morning. We're taking Ruby back to my house. We're going to finish this job. This has been your quarantine. Uh, Ruby week, and we're just we're doing out a lot. here in the mobile shop. Yeah, we're we got the mobile shop. <laughs> it's perfect. We got Coop on the scene. All right. Ooh, that's tight on the starter. Ooh, no way. Oh no way. Does it actually fit? Yeah. They were designed. I mean, they were well, just, they hold on. Built. Look how low it is, though. It is very low. Well, there ain't not much you can do about that. Yeah, that's not. We can really cut a little bit off. Or... We got to think about this. It ain't no lower than what Leroy's belly pan is. Yeah, his belly pan. Because his belly pan sits below this pan by at least two inches. Well, I'll be dang. Let me get a front view. Oh, dude, that's that ain't gonna clear. I promise you, the way we drive, that thing will get self clearance. Well, you should pick up a little ride height no matter what, because the weight taken off the nose. Yeah. Oh. Cooper with the the useful pint there. True you that. Like a hundred pounds off the. It's nose. not perfect on the fitment side. I'll say well, that. Who knows if that's even? Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say that might be the right side. That looks better for me. Yeah, for sure over here. Okay. Oh, oh, look nice. at the clearance. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> We have it on backwards. Oh, so you, Dude. I think it's made for that so you can clear. Wow. On you see the difference though? Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, boys. No welding anymore. It looks like they make it the clear 406 then 480. Yeah. Well, dang, dude. We're in business. I the need the bands. Who would have thought the Holly headers fit on a Corvette? I just want to say. It's pretty cool for Corvette owners to know. Yeah, if you got a C6, it'll likely fit. Because, our well, we have a SFI bell housing. The other one will be even smaller. So, hell yeah, brother. All right, so we got to put that on. That was that saved us a lot of work. Guys, it rained today, so our track rental has been canceled. And we are now racing Monday. Wah, wah. So, sad. But we will at least get Ruby running here in a second. Put the warm-up time on the engine get it warmed up and then hopefully have uh, enough run time on it for it to be broken in and ready to rip cooper now you've been keeping track of how many revisions this is right I lost track you lost track dude four turbos ago that was one you had one job dude you're supposed to keep hey, track four turbo this is only the third turbo that's been on it <laughs> so just while i have this manifold off the car i'll show you guys what it looks like so this goes on the passenger side and that crossover comes up, V-bands right onto here, and then the manifold joins it right up here. Goes to, what was this, three and a half, James? Mm -hmm. Three and a half inch V-band. And that's what comes up right here, holds the turbo. Uh, Pretty pipes. cool. Oh, a little loose still. 
I never tightened that V-band, did you? I did, it, it, the turbo's not tight on the pipe yet. Oh, I was like, man, that's pretty ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, overall, actually a pretty crazy look. <laughs> Looks it is great. literally seven on a turbo directly over the radiator. Yeah. So I don't know if this is gonna help our intake air temps, being that really the hottest point was here, but now we got the exhaust closer, the wastegate closer. It could get the intake heated up, but I mean, we run the thing for such a short period of time with ice and the intercooler, it should be no big deal. The other thing too is this is like a more direct flow. Yep. Before it was like that loop-de-doop thing going yeah. on. We actually didn't have to extend any of our vacuum lines, guys, yeah, incredibly. So we are uh, gonna put some water in this thing and we're ready to fire it up. How do you feel? Ready. It looks ready. <laughs> I'm ready to see some oil pressure, boys. Yee -yee. It looks a lot different. Yeah, I mean, I had to reuse this because we didn't have the right V-band for this or another flange for this here. Yeah. The wall fell. People but this understand. could be redone and it'll fit a whole lot better. Yeah, that could look really one. awesome. Given the circumstances and materials I had. Yep. This is it, folks. 427. Listen, Leroy ran his first seven on this motor. There's no reason why Ruby can't go faster than that. So we might I'm need gonna, a bigger turbo. I'm going to predict on this turbo setup, if this converter doesn't just blow into pieces, <laughs> there's a potential wow. 770 in it the way it is. Woo! We'll see what happens. All set? I think we're ready. I'll run the start hair. I'll insert finger and turbine. Yeah, Here do that. Go. This is the second first fire up for Little Ripper. It's 2.0 version. I know Leroy's gonna hear this. It's like, hell yeah, brother from the shop. So far, really well here. Oh, I left the power off. Hold on. Okay, everybody ready now? Everyone's gotta be on the edge of their seat. Uh, no throttle. Yeah. I am definitely on the edge of my seat. Not in a seat, Cooper. Yes, it is. You found her? Found the plug. Okay, round two. There you go. <laughs> it's still not hot. It sounds a lot throatier. A lot throatier. A lot deeper. Yeah, I get some temperature in it. She seems a Let little fired. Yeah, I wasn't touching it at all those last few startups.
Hell yeah, how you feel about that? Sounds good. Dude, it sounds way nicer. Yeah. But uh, that's the power of Texas Speed, brother. Ruby just went from like a little bit of Texas Speed parts to a complete engine of Texas Speed parts, guys. So super pumped. The car was running perfect. I mean, the air fuels are right where they needed to be. We're gonna have to change the, the tip in on the throttle because I saw when you revved it, it like just choked itself. Yeah. A lot of tuning adjustments to be made, but once it's wide open throttle and that holly starts correcting, we're good to go. So, I mean, really, I think we should do a couple pulls at the Freedom Factory Friday and then just send it on the track and, you know, start on low boost, maybe well, 60 mean, foot hit, eighth mile, then quarter mile. All we need to do is just do a couple like 330 rips on the tune-ups we have. Yeah. And just check, you know, check a plug and just make sure everything's the same and see if it wants more or will take light you know we don't know what this motor wants it could want 100%. another 10 degrees of timing over what we want and there's on. always a chance that we're just going to have way too much exhaust air now and this turbo is going to be tapped so yeah we'll find out right away but hell yeah dude i mean we not this was a really simple task i mean yeah, besides I mean, changing the turbo kit that kind of sucked this went super quick super easy we had a lot of fun doing it got to work from home this week and just yeah. uh you know, a little quarantine Ruby love right here, boys. So this turbo setup looks a lot better though. You like it like this? I do. It, it's definitely, I mean, there's less over here where you need to like yeah. plugs and stuff. Yep, and it's not over the roof line anymore, which is weird. <laughs> Kinda. The exhaust isn't yeah. over the roof. <laughs> it's hung farther forward too, so if it does try to have yeah. a wheelie, you get a little more weight on That's true. We're towards the nose. So this is, uh, you know, That's this so is cool. a reason number one why I've never put the hood back on Ruby, the turbo kit can change like that boys you know the deal so yeah. here we are on revision 479 and we're ready to run a seven second pass so that's it guys we've got a new turbo kit new texas speed 427 shout out to our boys at texas speed love you guys but uh it's time to go drag racing other than that guys thanks for watching do it for dale we'll freaking see you later yee yee yeah.